Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, Peter Schiff shares his view on the current economic problems. Listen to what he has to say. Well, this recession is going to be here for a lot longer than most. And by the time it ends, unemployment rates could be setting a record. Now, the way we measure unemployment now, we may never beat the record set in the 1930s, because just like we no longer accurately report on the inflation rate, we also no longer accurately count all the unemployed people as being unemployed. So it's going to be very hard to officially match the numbers of the 1930s, although unofficially we could easily exceed the levels of unemployment that we had during that depression in the depression that I believe has already started. And in fact, a lot of other markets are also providing evidence that people have shifted their focus from being worried about inflation to being worried about recession. We had a big drop in bond yields today. Why are bond yields dropping? Because people are anticipating recession. A lot of commodity prices have backed off considerably. We've had a big drop in oil prices. We're all the way back down to 104 for a barrel of crude oil. That's a pretty big reduction. We were above $120 a barrel last week. So a pretty big and rapid decline in the price of oil as investors are anticipating a reduction in demand during a recession. Also, we're not seeing any movement in the gold market, even though people may anticipate that the Federal Reserve is going to be less aggressive in fighting inflation because the recession is going to do its job for it. We're not seeing people buying gold. I mean, they're not selling gold. Gold's still hanging out around 1840. It's still slightly positive on the year. That's about where it ended last year. We're just a few bucks higher. I mean, gold is holding up better than just about every other asset. And in fact, in other currencies, gold has gained because the dollar is up quite a bit on the year. And so that means the price of gold is up quite a bit in other currencies. So gold has done an okay job so far in 2022, especially relative to other assets. But it hasn't done what I anticipated it would do because investors still don't understand that this recession is not only not going to cure inflation, it's going to make the inflation problem worse when they figure that out the price of gold is really going to take off. But in the meantime, because they haven't figured that out, look at how weak gold stocks have been. In fact, gold stocks had a very weak day today, much weaker than the overall stock market. In fact, year to date, despite a slight gain in the price of gold, the GDX, which is an index of major gold producers, is down about six and a quarter percent on the year. And the GDXJ, which represents the junior miners, is down 14%. Now, I think what happened is a lot of people who bought some of the gold stocks because they correctly anticipated inflation would be a problem, well, now that it is a problem, they're looking to take profits, and there's not a lot of people who want to take the other side of that trade because people are not worried about future inflation. They're worried about the Fed fighting inflation, which they think is bad for gold, and they're worried about the Fed winning its fight against inflation, having a recession. And so there's no need to worry about inflation in the future. So there's no need to buy gold stocks today as a hedge against future inflation, which isn't going to exist. But again, the market is completely wrong on this. And this is what opens up the opportunity for investors who actually understand what most investors are still oblivious to. But when it comes to market volatility, since my last podcast, Nothing tops what happened in cryptocurrencies with Bitcoin, with Ether. We had a huge crash over the three-day weekend. In fact, it was a slow motion crash. It wasn't one of these collapses where Bitcoin dropped several thousand dollars a coin you know, in one or two minutes. It was just a slow and steady decline over most of the weekend. In fact, I think we bottomed out on Sunday and then we had a rally but the low that Bitcoin got down to was 17,800, something like that. When I recorded my last podcast, Bitcoin had rebounded from not quite touching 20,000 back up to 22,000. And you had a lot of people that were confident that that 20,000 number was going to hold because that was the high from 2017. And so people thought that that old high would be the new support.
Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. In fact, during the whole 11 or 12 year history of Bitcoin, it has never gone below a previous peak. So every time Bitcoin has made a peak and then sold off sharply and then made new highs, the correction has never brought it below a previous peak until now. So Bitcoin has just done something that it's never done before. And that should be a wake up call that maybe the game has changed. And we are now in the permanent bear market for Bitcoin that if you hold and hope, Bitcoin is not going to come back and make a new high. And I was certain that when it left that 20,000 intact, that it was going to take it out. That even if we were going to have a meaningful short term bear market rally, that at a minimum, we were going to have to take out 20,000. And sure enough, we did. Uh, we even took out 18,000. But then we rallied back. By the time the U.S. stock market opened for business on Tuesday, not only was Bitcoin above 20,000, it was above 21,000. And again, a lot of people in the Bitcoin community were very confident that the bottom was in. In fact, CNBC spent the entire day trying to convince its audience that the lows were in, that it was still a bull market. They had one guy on there, and I'm not making this up. He was saying, you got to buy Bitcoin because it has proven itself to be a long-term store of value. How has it proven itself to be a store of value? It's just collapsed 75%. I mean, if it's going to go down by 75%, it's hard to say that it's proved that it's a store of value when you've lost 75% of the value that you wanted to store. You know, the guy who takes the cake is Michael Saylor, who continues to go on every podcast that will have him, no matter how small the audience, to brag about how much money he's making in Bitcoin. What a great decision he had to buy Bitcoin, even though he's down like a billion and a half dollars. He's down over 30% on his average cost, which is over 30,000. As I'm recording the podcast today, we're just below 20,000 again. We're about 19,900. So it was a horrible decision to put Bitcoin on the balance sheet of MicroStrategy, yet he claims it's the best investment he could have made. He's still claiming that buying Bitcoin was the best thing that he could have done with MicroStrategy's money, even though he's down over 30% on his investment and he borrowed a lot of the money. So not only is he down what he lost, but he's down the interest that he's paying to borrow the money that he lost. Now, sure, he got a low rate of interest, but how is that any consolation when what he bought with that borrowed money has dropped by better than 30% and it could drop a whole lot more? There is significant downside risk now in Bitcoin. The chart looks horrible. The fundamentals are horrible. This whole thing is blowing up. And what we haven't even had yet, in my opinion, are the mass liquidations. I don't think we've had all the margin calls. I think we've had some. I think we've seen some of that. In fact, I pointed out on Twitter on Friday, I was watching the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust sell off to a 37% discount to NAV. The discount had never been that bad. And again, that showed me that there's some real pressure to sell. Maybe some holders of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust had to sell. They had margin calls. This thing has been a complete disaster. It went from a 30% premium to a 37% discount, and it completely blows away the idea that institutions are interested in Bitcoin. They want to buy Bitcoin because they would be buying the Grayscale Trust because they don't want to buy Bitcoin directly. And the GBTC, which is the symbol, is better than buying an ETF because you're getting it at a 37% discount. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me 
would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave. You forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.